welcome back we are now looking at some of the questions and in an earlier session we had i had said that we will look at icc or institute cargo clauses again because many of you have raised a question on that so we have akanksha rajpur who is asking what is the difference between an open policy and an open cover akanksha open cover and open policy refers to marine and cargo insurance so consignments being sent from one place to another is covered under an insurance policy normally insurance will be taken for individual consignments but because a client has a, a customer has a lot of transactions daily he is unable to keep track otherwise so he in advance he takes an open cover or an open policy an open policy means the premium is booked and the insurance company is uh, up to that sum insured he can declare all consignments on a weekly basis or a monthly basis so in every consignment he has a time pa time span in which to report because premium has already been paid up to that sum insured before the, he cannot send any further consignments if the sum insured is exhausted because premium has to always be received before the transactions or the consignment or transaction transit starts an open cover is normally it's a declaration so a deposit is created and each time a consignment is going along with the details a check would be paid given to take care of the premium so insurance company has already the premium in a deposit they book the consignment under that and the check that is in is added to the premium the reserve of the deposit that is created so invariably open cover normally would be offered when it is consignments going overseas because overseas consignments require to be declared to customs so a document is essential there is not otherwise there is no difference the open cover is an agreement it is not a legally enforceable document open policy means the premium is booked and accounted for and so insurance company is legally liable in case there is a deficiency Mohammad Amin Lahirwal when IRDA is formed IRDA is the insurance regulatory authority was created by an act of parliament called the IRDA act 1999 IRDA has taken over the functions of the control of insurance control of insurance was in existence with the insurance act 1938 the the person control of insurance was an uh, executive was the secretary in the ministry of finance who was responsible for ensuring that insurance companies followed the regulations of administration and management of the companies so irda has been set up to be the regulator for the insurance industry irda has been given additional functions to bring in new regulations to uh, observe and protect the policy holders and overall general solvency margins and other reservations to ensure that an insurance market develops gradually and carefully and in a responsible manner what is tpa third party tpa is a third party administrator so a tpa is an outsourced agency which is managing most uh, third party ins the insurances of medical insurance so medical insurance claims are being managed by the third party administrator they are companies who have got licensed from irda they have to have a minimum paid up capital they have to have a doctor qualified doctor on on their board who will be observing and controlling the functioning of the tpa they have to again enter into agreements with various parties hospitals doctors and when client, when cashless facilities are there they have to tie up with hospitals for cashless facility for all policy holders in addition they have to keep control of costs maintain the data of claims and provide it to the insurance companies they cannot do any other activities except the third party administration of medical claims of insurance companies lakhan pal pal what is rating rating means a premium rate to be charged for any risk when you buy some product you pay a price so rating is the price you pay for a particular insurance policy 
these rates are worked out based on various factors which we have seen in and we will be seeing again in the course of the questions that we are raised. So rate is essentially the charges that you have to pay for an insurance policy. Angshuman Roy, you ask how is the the fortune uh, follow the fortune associated with no claim bonus in motor insurance. Follow the fortune. Motor no claim bonus is given because there has been no claim reported by the insured for any damage to the vehicle. And because the insured has been driving carefully and that is why there has been no accident, the insured gets a discount on the second year's, next year's premium. So each year, continuous year that there is no claim, the discount rises. It's, a no, it's called the no claim discount. If a claim is reported, the next year's no claim bonus is lost and you start from zero. So the person who was driving carefully is earning the benefit of a reduced premium. If the person sells the car, that reduced premium benefit cannot be given to the new owner because that benefit has come in because of good driving of the insured, of the original owner. So owner, the original owner only is entitled to the no claim bonus. So if original owner sells the vehicle, they can get another, buy another vehicle and continue the no claim bonus. So the no claim bonus will be kept in credit for that individual till such time, maximum three years, within which they can buy a new vehicle and continue the benefit that they have enjoyed. Jyoti, what is general accounting in insurance? We have just seen that where we have seen a standard accounting for all insurance, uh, for all companies, but in different in, from insurance companies because we are showing premiums separately, we are showing management expenses separately, we are showing claims prep separately, we are showing different reserves, reinsurance, offshore pro, uh, uh, overseas uh, functions and incomes reserve from that, we are showing reinsurance. So what you see is reserves accounting segment wise in an insurance company. Insurance companies do not give details of what investments and reserves, investments that they have done because the investment requirement as, the, as laid down by IRDA, we saw that investment in central government securities and state government securities, in housing finance and state housing and firefighting and infrastructure and other approved securities. So you can, uh, insurance companies in India cannot invest as per their, as per what they think should be right they have to follow the norms laid down by the IRDA. Alpana Datta Das, you ask policy conditions provide for to apply to claims. So policy conditions, what we call conditions sub precedent to liability, subsequent to liability. If a loss has occurred, the customer, there are certain conditions which the customer has to follow. It is written in the policy. Inform the insurance company immediately. Take precautions to protect the property from further damage. Provide all information that the insurance company or the representative, the surveyor who will, or investigator asks for. Inform authorities like if it's a burglary, fire, the police report, first information report. If it is a fire, maybe fire brigade if it has been called for their report. Any chemical analysis of salvage or ascertainment, all those fact documents have to be provide all information of existing insurances because the contribution clause will come into play. If I have insurance and more, more than one insurance policy for the same property, all of the policies will share in proportion because insurance is about indemnity. So these are the conditions all specified. So conditions which are listed in the policy are called express conditions. They are there, they have to be followed. Implied is understood, it is, does not, it is not mentioned in the policy. Kirit Shah, you asked what is peril? A peril is the event which has caused the damage. A fire causing damage to property, a fire out of control, accidental fire is a peril, lightning is a peril, flood is a peril, cyclone is a peril, burglary is a peril. So these are events which have caused the loss to the customer. What 
about satellite, Raman asks about satellite insurance. All of you now know that we ISRO sends out a lot of satellites every time ISRO is launching satellites. We have also, you have also heard of Apollo, Apollo the Apollo, USA NASA satellites. You will have heard of Kalpana Chawla who unfortunately died in one of the satellite accidents. So now you know what a satellite is. The, to prepare to build a satellite is a cost. It takes years. So the cost of building, while building something could go wrong. So that is called the pre-op. So pre-launch. So the, the process of building the satellite or getting the satellite constructed is the pre-launch. After the pre-launch, the satellite will be brought to the launching pad, getting ready for launch. So that's the next aspect. So what can go wrong at that time? It is brought to the launching pad, so while it is being moved, it could get be damaged. It will have to be repaired or may have to be shelved or t forgotten. It is brought to the satellite launching pad. It is set up and then it is launched. While launching, it may not work function or may while immediately it goes into launch and it is destroyed. So while it is being set, so that is the one. Now the satellite goes out into the atmosphere and it is put into a particular orbit around going in a particular trajectory. Once it is placed in that trajectory, it becomes the orbit insurance. So if anything goes wrong, the satellite has been sent out for a particular number of years, we expect to get the benefits of that satellite. We have invested so much in that. Something could go wrong and it may get destroyed or it may not provide us with what, info, what we were thought of and the lifespan may be reduced. So that loss of income or loss of uh, data, that is also insured in the orbit phase. In addition, once it goes in, in fact, in the full process of sending the satellite, there has to be control from the launch pad, from launching to orbiting, and also keeping track of the satellite and recording all the information it is providing, whether it's a weather forecast, whether it is radio, radio frequency, what all types of communications has to be monitored. So there will be a ground office which will be tracking and following up and gathering the data. So ground risk can also be covered because equipment have to be maintained and you have to keep in regular touch. If equipments fail, you will not be able to keep in touch with the satellite. So those equipments can also be insured. Failure on that which means you lose the data that is coming from the satellite, streaming from the satellite. So those losses get covered. So this basically is satellite insurance. There could be a third that the satellite may come crashing and destroy or harm people in the, uh, in the surrounding areas. There could be damage because of the satellite crashing or the satellite while it is being, uh, while it is being launched, it may explode and destroy property and lives. So all this can be insured under the liability insurance under satellite insurance. So this briefly is satellite insurance which should be sufficient for you to answer the questions related to satellite insurance in the exam. What is hazard? These are all part of principles of insurance. What is a hazard? It is the exposure to the danger. or As a result, a greater exposure. Living, living near a river, the hazard is flooding. Living near or a factory, in a chemical factory, what is the hazard? Explosions of chemicals causing pollution. So hazards are making the risk a little greater, making a greater exposure. So a person with having birth defects or a person having health problems will mean they could develop further complications. So the hazard is greater. Diabetes results in a number of, is a hazard because it results in a number of other ailments occurring and uh, recovery being slow. Ashwin, I believe researchers develop the pricing models and in India how much we are contributing to this. Every insurance company has a system of maintaining its record and data and working out. In addition, IRDA is gathering statistics generalized statistics which are available to the insurance companies to work out and arrive at additional premiums. So not just agencies, within insurance companies also because they have to follow certain practices, they have, their company has got an underwriting policy in place, 
so they decide they keep keeping those in mind they work out research they do their research and they collect their data and work out their premiums how we calculate rate in pure premium method sunil koshi pure premium as i told you is the actual claims paid in the last few years so over 5 years how much is the claim paid for the last 5 years individually how many policies were issued for those particular risk for example if i am looking at private cars car insurance private cars insured for damage risk own damage so an insurance company will look at how many what is the total value of claims that they have paid for private cars how many cars they have insured so each year the number of cars insured against the premium that is received and that premium received will be divided will work out the claims and divide it among all the cars that we have insured so that is the basic pure premium then we add all the additional costs of expenses and other which are subjective matters pawan asks what is marine insurance marine the minute you hear the word marine you know it it relates to water so marine insurance is one of the oldest branches of insurance when cargo and all transportation was by sea or river so the most common transportation was by boats and ships so cargo was being taken trade was being developed cargo was being taken from one place to another buying and selling to place across the world and so owners if the ship sank the owners lost the cargo they lost the source of their income so they insured the cargo for damages of such marine perils and that is how marine insurance came into being so marine insurance has two elements one is insurance of the cargo of consignments and the other is insurance of the ships of all the equipments that are plying on water ships boats sailing vessels all types can be insured anything that is on water can be insured under marine insurance hull it is known as marine hull cargo is consignment now marine cargo insurance finally expanded to include transports by road by rail and by air because these transportation modes came in much later so marine insurance originally was shipping by ships and boats and slowly as these new transportation modes came in it was expanded to include cargo sent by road rail and air so even though they do not cross over they are not linked with water cargo insurance is available by all modes of transport explain marine cum erection policy so marine cum erection marine so it is involving cargo transit so that equipments or machines are coming from the manufacturer site to the location where they are going to be installed so why the equipment is coming if it is damaged it in the transit it is called marine transit insurance but this marine cum erection goes one step further we are insuring this consignment from the time it leaves the warehouse of the manufacturer it comes to the site where it is going to be installed while it is lying there waiting for the for the site to be ready if any damages take place that is called a storage loss it comes under engineering erection or risk now after it has come to the location it is the consignment is opened up from its uh, from its container and it is the process of installation starts engineers and laborers will be involved in the installation while installing something can go wrong the machine can be damaged so that is called erection loss after the machine is is erected if everything has gone fine they have to test it so they will test it first with an empty load then they will test it with the full capacity as provided by the manufacturer so any damages taking place in the testing is also treated as part of the erection loss so marine cum erection is a comprehensive insurance for machines which have to be installed it can be a single machine it can be the installation for an entire factory of all machines that is marine cum erection well pawan we have been talking about insurance all this while now i have your question what is insurance what is insurance 
insurance is a fund created to pay out for losses of a few so many form a fund from which the losses of a few will be paid so it is a form of protection for major financial loss very similar to a chit fund only difference is a chit fund you will get the money as per the lottery that will be held in an insurance the premium is so low the premium in general insurance is sufficient to cover based on insurance experience probability so not we know in a group a certain percentage only will be suffering losses who those persons are we do not know but if they suffer a loss because all the group will be creating a fund from which those few who suffer the loss will be able to recover their loss and restart their lives so that is basically insurance a fund created to provide for the losses of a few shared among a group who could be facing the same loss what is the meaning of claim in, in insurance so insurance is protection for losses so the claim is the loss are taking place a peril has occurred property is damaged a person is injured a person has fallen medically has been hospitalized that is the loss that is the claim so under medical insurance medical expenses will be paid if a property is damaged type of property if a car is damaged motor insurance will come into play so this is basically what the insurance is about what is marine hull mangesh putale we have i have just answered that so you know marine hull is insurance of all types of ships the ships that are plying on the water ships that are being built and also ships which are going to be destroyed because now they have gone old they have to be destroyed they will be taken and to a place where they are normally destroyed in, in india we all hear of a place in gujarat called alang where the ships are sent for destruction so they will be dismantled and sold off as scrap rahul jain on which basis would be house insurance now the question is very vague i presume you want to know insurance of the house so uh, when what are we insuring we normally give house insurance to insure the building and whatever is the contents in the house so all our furniture fixtures and whatever for things we have in our house this is normally given under a fire insurance policy which includes a number of perils besides fire so destruction of the home now what will be destroyed it will be the building the construction so insurance is only to insure the construction of the building which you have to reconstruct if the property is damaged like your furniture is damaged your sofa bed whatever you will re, you will buy a new sofa you will buy a new bed so insurance will pay for purchasing a new item but insurance will pay not the new item because you, you if you have used it for some period you have already taken benefit so insurance will be insured for what is called market value depreciated value new price less depreciation for the age of the property that is already over sagar samir you ask explain once again reinstatement the reinstatement in fire insurance there are many meanings reinstate the property if i have gone in for a reinstatement value policy i am not going to get claim on depreciated basis i have committed that i will install the building or whatever is destroyed i will buy a new one and install it so reinstatement means reinstalling the property that is destroyed so the new cost is what i have insured for and on that basis i have to submit the bills of the cost of replacing whatever is there property that was damaged or destroyed and that cost will be paid provided my sum insured is adequate if the sum insured is not adequate it will be treated as under insured amit sharma in mode of settlement what is reinstatement so now you have understood the reinstatement that you have to reinstate the property you can i in insurance if the property is destroyed you can take a prem the sum insured entitlement based on what you have insured less depreciation for age but in reinstatement you have to restate you have to rebuild whatever is destroyed 
and that cost will be allowed to you in the insurance claim. Amit Sharma, you again ask, what are court awards and what are legal? Court awards means a judgment passed by the court. Have you heard of consumer court? You know consumer court says that insurance company has to pay a particular claim or somebody has to pay the cost of some, a builder has to pay a cost because he never met, gave the uh, flat to the person who has uh, already, he has entered into agreement with. So these are court judgments. The court has ordered that you have to do this. So in, in insurance, Motor third party claims because the person who is injured by the car or bus not injuring them, causing the accident, they will file a claim for compensation and the court will pass a judgment based on their income, their family responsibilities, their dependents. The court will say this amount of compensation has to be paid to them and this is the court award. So this is the judgment and the amount which the court asks. Subrogation. So subrogation means somebody else has been responsible for my loss. So as a normal case, I have to ask that individual to pay me my loss. And I will recover my loss from that individual. But I have an insurance policy which covers such damage. So instead of asking the person who caused my loss to pay me, I tell my insurance company, this is the peril that has happened and I have suffered a loss, it is an accidental peril, please pay me my loss. So I get recover from the insurance company my loss. But I have a right to claim under from that other party. Indemnity says I cannot claim from both. I take, cannot take from insurance company and also from that custom person who caused the loss. That would be profit. Indemnity means you must get only what you have lost. So what the insurance company will do? They have paid your claim. They tell you, you please send a notice to the person who has caused the loss that you want to recover. And once they pay the claim, then they will demand that recovery from them. So you, your matter is sorted, you have got your amount for loss. The insurance company chases that, that person who has caused the loss and asks them to pay. So when they pay it, they will adjust it against the loss settled. So if they, uh, they have paid you 1000 rupees the, and the, they have got a settlement of 300 rupees, to that extent, the loss has been reduced in their books. So, 1000 minus 300, which means the net loss to them from that incident is only 700. Reinsurance. Reinsurance is an insurance company taking up insurance policy for all the risks that they have taken. So, reinsurance is insurance company taking insurance. Because the insurance company feels that the amount of risk that they have accepted is very heavy. It could have a major impact on their financial situation. So they transfer some of these risks to another insurance company. It is called reinsurance. Similarly, a reinsurance company will also transfer some of the risk to another insurance company and that will call retrocession. So insurance companies take on risk from general public. Then part of that risk they transfer to another insurance company, say reinsure it to this extent, they in turn may insure to another with another insurance company. Ashok Hadia, Madam, is contribution and co insurance same? Contribution means a customer has taken more than one insurance policy for the same risk. So all the policy when a loss takes place all the policies will share the loss. You cannot take the full claim from every policy. The, all the policies will share the loss in equal proportion. That is contribution. So the customer has arranged for separate insurances. In co-insurance, on one policy, more than one insurance company is interested. So the insurance company, it could be like ICSI Lombard has, has got a fire insurance policy of a particular factory. The customer has also said that I want New India to have 20% share in this. So New India's risk, uh, risk is 20% on that policy. ICICI may have 40%. He may also say that I want Royal Sundaram to have another 10%. So that means there are three insurers on the same property. Their, sh their sharing is 60, 7, 20 and 10. So whatever is the sharing arrangement as decided by the customer, in that proportion 
each of them is sharing the risk. So when a loss takes place, the, ins the leading insurance company, ISIS or Lombard, will pay the claim and recover from the shares from the other two companies. That is coinsurance. So coinsurance is more than one insurance company is on the risk for one single policy. Ashok Raj, why not we pay premium in installments? General insurance policies are annual policies. Premiums are worked out on the basis of risk on an annual basis. Premiums in installment are not permitted because insurance law provides that no premium should be paid in installments. Full premium has to be paid before the risk starts. Only if a property is uh, insurance is being taken from taken for more than one year which happens in projects, engineering projects, then only installment facility will be allowed. Similarly, installment facility is given for insurance of ships because they have high values, so they are pay, uh, uh, permitted to pay installments on a quarterly basis. But otherwise, it is not permitted under Indian laws. Sunil Banka, what is valued policies, full value policies and first loss policies? Full value policies. So what is a, a full value policy? I am insuring the, for the full value of the property. That is a full value policy. Under insurance law, you have to insure for full value. If you insure for less than full value, you are underinsured, which means the insurance company will never pay a full loss. They will say that you have insured for less, so you, ha you, have, you are a, your own insurer for that proportion. That is why full value policies have to be taken. But the facility is available for a limited value called first loss. This is given in case of properties where the possibility of burglary of the entire property is very, very remote. At the most, some percentage could be lost or stolen. So burglary pro provides for you will have to declare the full value and some percentage on a first loss basis can be then taken. For ex I will give you an example. There is a warehouse storing television sets. New television sets. There are almost eight, uh, 1 million or 10 lakhs of television sets, uh, sets stored in the warehouse. What is the chance of a burglar taking away that entire 1 million or 10 lakh sets? He will require how many, bus, um, how many trucks to carry it. So someone will notice that it is being taken or being stolen. It will come to light. So insurance company will say instead of insuring the full value, we will cover say up to 25% of these TV sets as a first loss. Manish Kasare, what is loss ratio? So ratios in, is a mathematical formula. Proportion of loss to premium received. That is the loss ratio. If my premium is 45,000 and my loss is 90,000, which means my loss ratio is 200%. So premium loss ratio, losses should be less than premium. 60% loss ratio of claims payout is a reasonable figure. Anything, any loss more than 60% of premium received is a risk going bad or the portfolio is going bad. So loss ratio is proportion of losses paid to premium received. What is burning cost? We have seen yesterday what burning cost is. Let us look at it once more because it involves you need to have just the basic knowledge of burning costs to understand. It is a simple way of working out claims experiences and provisions to work out our premium rate. What we do is we look at the last five years claims Total claims, we divide by 5, 
we come to the average annual claims. Then we adjust this for any special circumstances. Like some there may have been a large risk, a large loss which has uh, one or two large losses have taken place so that is why it is very high. We may adjust for that. We normally adjust for inflation because costs are going up so even losses, will, uh, losses in, in future will increase because of inflation. So this then works out as our average loss, ratio, loss amount. We then look at what is the total sum insured for these, this, this product, product or this particular policy, types of policies. What is the total sum insured we have insured across all categories. For example, let's take the example private cars. I have insured my average, I have worked out the claims ratio for my private cars. I have seen how much is the average claims per year. Now I am seeing what is the total value for which I have insured all the private cars in my portfolio. That total value I will divide by the number of cars that I have insured. So I have come out to an average exposure per car. To this average, so the claims that I have worked out, losses paid, now I will divide by the average risk that I have taken. So the, my average of car, value of cars I have taken and that then will give me a standard premium or more, I would say my pure premium that I need to charge. Then that prop, pure premium I will adjust for additional features like overall loss experience, features that have discontinued, new things that have come in, new increases, exclusions which are pre previously exclusions are now covered and all of this will then work out to be my final premium rate or book rate on which I can charge my premium. So that essentially is burning cost. Insurance Act Section 64VB It is very important because in India, this is one of the major, major requirements for anyone taking insurance. Pay the premium, then only risk will start. So premium has to be paid under this particular law. No insurance company can give insurance without receiving premium. Premium payments can be made by cash, check and various types given. So this is essentially 64 VB. Santanu Samta, what is the premium limit in case of micro insurance? There is no premium limit. It has to be a small amount, a reasonable cost which people of low income can afford or below poverty line can afford. That is essentially pure premium cost. All the best to all of you in your exam. Thank you very much. I forgot it was